Welcome to the Red Dice Diaries. This podcast is a rambling journey through the wonderful world of RPGs from the viewpoint of a long-time GM and player. The music at the start of this podcast was Nightmare by Alexander Nakarada and is used under Creative Commons license. Okay, so I talked a bit in a previous episode about BX Essentials, the OSR book that I've recently just purchased. Well, I say book, it's actually four smaller books from Necrotic Gnome Productions, written by Gavin Norman. Now, the, the author made no bones about what his aims were for the actual book. Effectively, he wanted to present a faithful rendition of the original BX rules for D&D, just with a few ambiguities resolved and the layout tidied up and made a little bit clearer and easy to reference. Now, like I say, I'm a big fan of these four books. The, the fifth book, Adventures and Treasure, has not been released yet, but I've had a peek at the pre-formatted text of that, and I like that as well. Now, even though I've got the books and I'm quite a big fan of them, I was looking on the internet and looking to just see what other people have been thinking about it and what the, the general reception to it had been. After all, I like to get other people's opinions and find out what other people think about various things. And one of the things I found a little bit surprising was on a number of different web forums, I won't go into the exact names of the forums in question, there seemed to be a lot of people who were just like, oh, well, I can just buy the original BX, or how is this different from any other OSR games, or it's too expensive, or it doesn't do anything particularly new. I don't want it. It's wrong. I don't like it. It's wrong. 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 I don't like it. Wrong. You get the idea. And I just found this entirely bewildering. Not the fact that people (laughs) think that their views are 100% right and or wrong. After all, I have been on the internet before. I know what people are like on there. But the whole idea that just because there's other OSR games out there that another one is somehow a waste of space or less valuable because of that. Now, one of the things the author in the the foreword of BX Essentials points out is the reason they wanted to do a faithful recreation of the old BX rules is because all of the OSR games, pretty much, that have come previously, the author puts their own twist, their own spin, their own little bit of flavour onto the basic bare bones of the original D&D rules. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I've got a number of different OSR systems that have different focuses, whether it's the weird sort of horror slash fantasy of Lamentations of the Flame Princess, whether it's the the sort of Tolkien-esque journeys and sense of wonder that is the hero's journey, or whether it's the cut-down, sort of streamlined version of D&D that is Swords and Wizardry White Box, or whether it's the the nice simple layout and faithful recreation of BX Essentials. They all have something a little bit different to them. And to my view, so what if BX Essentials is just a representation of the old BX rules? I'll say now, I've got a copy of the D&D Rule Cyclopedia that I bought print on demand because I'd not had a copy of it for ages. I'd always wanted a copy of it when I was younger. Never really got round to buying it. I'll probably tell that story at some other point if I've not already. But never got a copy of it. Now print on demand's a thing. Saw it, thought, yes, I'm finally going to get me a copy of that. Been reading through it. Absolutely loved it. But man, that book is dense and not that easy to reference. Hell, even the page numbers at the bottom of each page are so sort of... They don't stand out from the sort of border pattern to the point where 
for the first like couple of days after I got it, I thought my print on demand copy was defective and it was missing the page numbers. It was only when I really squinted at it that I could actually see the page numbers. And now that doesn't make me think that it's any less of a great read. I still enjoy reading it, but it's mainly as a sort of nostalgia piece or like I say, a coffee table book as Glenn, the old man Grognard, is fond of saying. But would I actually run a game using the rules cyclopedia? No, I probably wouldn't, because even though I love those rules, I like having a book that's easy for me to reference, easy for me to find what I want to use in a game without me having to make numerous notes, stick a million bookmarks in the book, etc., and that is the real joy of BX Essentials for me. It takes those rules and it says, yes, here's the pretty much the exact same rules that you recognize from the old BX. And I've compared the rules between BX Essentials and my rule cyclopedia. And they're pretty damn spot on, apart from a few places where they've been clarified and cleaned up a little. But the rules are the same. And it says... You can have all of those same rules, but we've just made them easier to reference, easier to understand. We've highlighted a few bits and pieces here and there. We've split it up into a number of smaller books so that it's easy for you to focus on the bits and pieces that you need or to give out during a session. So, for instance, when it comes to the Cleric and Magic user spells, book you only need that if you're playing a cleric or a magic user if not don't worry about it it's not your bag if you're playing a normal character you might only need like a non-spell caster i should say you might only need the core rules and the classes and equipment book depending on how much your gm sort of taking charge of stuff you might only need the one classes and equipment book and okay you do have to pay like a few dollars for them if you want them in a printed version but there's a cheaper sort of paper option if you want that. And also they're available in PDF at a very reasonable price. So as far as I'm concerned, the fact that BX Essentials is a reprinting and a retreading of the BX rules doesn't devalue them in any way. Because what the author's doing is taking those rules, just polishing them up a bit, sort of finely honing them to the point where even though I'm like a fan of like ascending armor class and BX Essentials is a faithful rendition of the old BX rules uses Thaco, I'm like, do you know what? I'll buy into that. I'll use that because I like what the author has done with these rules. So to anyone out there who's like, oh, well, yeah, it's just, I, I could just get the BX rules. I don't need this. Do you know what? Yes, you could get the BX rules. That is absolutely fine. Get the original D&D rules if you want. Knock yourself out. However, if you want to get those same rules, but that have been put together with an eye towards simplistic, minimalistic, but very user-friendly layout and design, then BX Essentials is really what you want. And I, for myself, cannot wait to run a campaign using those rules. So that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or suggestions for things you'd like to see in the podcast in future, please either email them to reddicediaries at gmail.com or drop me a voicemail at Anchor. Until I see you next time, whenever you're playing, take care and enjoy yourselves. Thank you.